Hello coin collectors out there. Welcome back to the Big D Coins channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the much anticipated Barber coins. I previewed these coins in a couple of videos. So we have a 1906 half dollar, 1900 quarter, and a 1913 dime. 1913 dime is in pretty nice shape. These two right here have worn out a little. Uh, now, as far as where I got these coins, I got these coins from my local coin shop in Biddeford, Maine, Twin City Gold. I'll put a link to their eBay store in the description. If you're into coins, you want to buy some, buy or sell some very nice coins, check out their website and their eBay store. They have a lot of expertise and a lot of experience with buying and selling coins as well as jewelry. And they have lent me some of these coins to make videos about. Uh, otherwise, I might not have been able to get my hands on some of these higher quality coins like these Barbara coins right here so please do check them out now we're going to move to our regular felt right here so we're going with the red felt uh, so I've previewed these coins a few times I've been thinking about making a video about these for a while I've been trying to do as much research as possible however I was kind of letting that get in the way of producing anything so I figured I'd make a first attempt at it if you guys have some uh, suggestions or some corrections for me feel free to let me know and maybe I can do a revised version uh, with some updated information if you guys want to input some and let me know what you might be interested in hearing about or uh, some details that I might want to share in a upcoming video about these all right so we have a the half the quarter and the dime let's first talk about the designs and talk about why they call it the barbara coins so they call this the barbara dimes it is named after the guy who designed it actually uh, so the person who designed it was charles e barbara and at the time he was serving as the chief sculptor of United States Mint and uh, at the time the series was contemplated and eventually released. So he had a very, um, very big say in actually designing these coins right here. So the obverse of the coin, they are all the same right here. The obverse features the head of liberty facing the right, wearing a cap adorned with a band inscribed liberty. Now, unfortunately, uh, on the uh, half and the quarter, it's pretty worn out. We can see on the dime a little bit, that is the band right there that says Liberty. So we see the uh, the band right there saying Liberty. So that's one of the high points of the coin. That will be one of the first ones to wear out. On the half, we can actually see it just a little. We see the T and the Y in Liberty. So that's what we're looking at on the obverse of the coin. And actually one more thing that we see right here on the obverse, this wreath right here actually has 13 leaves in it. So very cool to commemorate obviously the 13 original colonies. Now when we flip it over, we see on the dime, we see a agricultural wreath. Uh, with the center right here, which says one dime. Many have compared this design to the Morgan dollar designed by Charles Morgan uh, several years earlier. Uh, although there are some differences, it looks a lot like the Morgan dollar. You might have come to that conclusion already. Now let's get some d information on the uh, half dollar reverse, half dollar and the quarter reverse design. So that's what the back of the dime looks like. And now this is what the back of the quarter on the right and the half dollar right here on the left. Let me zoom out a little bit for you. So what we're looking at on this reverse design right here. So we see uh, an eagle with an olive branch. So we've got the olive branch right here. We've got some arrows on the right. We've got a shield in the very center of the eagle. We've got a script going right here that says E Pluribus Unum. We see the inscription United States of America and then half dollar right here. So very cool design on both the obverse and the reverse of these uh, coins. Now you might not have seen these before because these are some quite some old coins. Uh, they were made from 1892 to 1916. So if you're just purely a coin roll hunter, you might not, uh, you probably won't be able to pull these out of circulation. You're going to have to pay to get a premium for them. Now let's get into some of the rarer coins. We'll start with the half dollar right here. 
I will zoom in for you. So the half dollar, the total number of coins struck for circulation was just 135 million. So that is pretty crazy uh, considering that some coins, they're making one, two, three, four billion in just one year nowadays. So for the entire half dollar series, there are only 135 million of them that were made. The 1899 Barber half dollar has the highest mintage at 5.5 million. The 1914 Barber half dollar has the lowest mintage of 124,000. So that is quite low mintage. Now, interestingly as well, these have the Philadelphia, the Denver, and the San Francisco mint, and they also have the New Orleans mint. So that New Orleans mint will have the O mint mark on it. So uh, that's a cool wrinkle as well that they have the New Orleans mint included, uh, made some of these, which has since shut down. And now we're just used to seeing the Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. Now, I was looking up the price uh, kind of the price guide to try and determine what type of price this half dollar would get me. And I think this would have a, um, a grade of about very good. So the definition of very good is considerable wear has flattened most of the fine detail. Most lettering remains readable. So all of the lettering on this is certainly readable. However, like it said, the uh, the wear has flattened most of the fine detail, like the Liberty, that would be considered the fine detail, and kind of uh, the uh, features in the hair, that would also probably be considered fine detail. So if I go to PCGS price guide for 1906 uh, Philadelphia Mint, and I look up a VG10, they've got a price guide of 38 dollars uh, and then that actually looks like it's quite in line with what they're recently selling for so one sold at a eb auction in august 2018 uh, graded vg 38 for 46 dollars uh, so this coin right here probably worth between uh 38 to 46 dollars so a very nice coin now i should mention the silver uh content as well so the silver content it's 90 percent silver and it has a overall coin weight of 12.5 grams the exact mintage for this one right here are 2,638,000. again this is the 1906 philadelphia mint uh, barber half dollar so very nice coin it's got a nice weight to it it's got a nice design people really like these barber half dollars and what's cool is that you can see the details even better than with the quarter. So now we have the quarter right here. As far as the price of it, I would say this is probably a very good as well. Maybe even uh, VG10, maybe even one step lower. So one step lower from a VG10 would be a VG8. Uh, the description of that one is most central detail is worn flat. Some interior lettering is still visible. Rims remain full. So uh, the interior lettering is still visible, uh, but the rim, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, the detail the central detail is definitely worn flat so if we're looking at the pcgs price guide for a 1900 uh, barber dime graded at a vg8 so they've got a price guide of 16 dollars. so although it's not um the most expensive coin you can still definitely uh it's definitely got some value to it now they've only graded three of them at a vg8 the reason for that being that people don't submit them at the lower grades because you don't really get a return on your investment from submitting it all right so we've talked about the uh this is about a 38 dollar coin right here on the left this one right here about a 16 dollar coin now what do you guys think this dime is going to be worth Actually, I didn't mention the mintage on the quarter, so let me give you that quickly. Uh, so for 1900 Philadelphia Mint quarter, the mintage is 10 million. So we went from a two million dollar half, a two million mintage half dollar to a 10 million mintage uh, quarter, and then this one right here, the 1913 dime, that's got a mintage of 19,760,000. Now this is probably the best. Uh, condition coin out of all three that we've looked at so far so that might bump up to a vf30 maybe possibly uh, where the definition of a vf30 is wear is now evident over the entire surface indicated design uh, detail being uh, excuse me intricate design detail begin to flatten so i would say that is the coin 
that is the case. So now we see here is there is a lot of detail to his actual hair, but that is starting to war starting to kind of uh, wear out, uh, and I believe that would be the case right here. We can see certainly more detail in the dime than we did with the quarter earlier, and we can see uh, most of the letters in Liberty in the little ribbon right here. So a VF30, uh, looking that up on the PCGS price guide, that'd be about a $15 coin. One actually sold uh, in November of 2018, it graded a VF30 for $20. So uh, approximately, we've got a $20 coin right here, about a $18 coin right here, and about a $38 coin right here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you are into coin collecting uh, and you uh, are knowledgeable about the Barber Dime, feel free to leave me some comments and let me know what you might be more interested in hearing about or some important details that I can make a revised video and share with people. So thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy and best of luck coin collecting out there. Take care.